The White to Dark Peak Way is a 27 and a half mile through hike starting in Bakel in the White Peak and finishing in the civil parish of Hope. So join me as I ramble through misty meadows, take on herds of cows, traverse granite edges and take unexpected detours across scree covered hillsides to complete what should have been a three day hike in just under 24 hours. Just set off walking in completely the wrong direction down the A6 so done a swift U-turn and uh, I'm going to get back on home lane and Monsell Trail. I'm just coming out of Bakewell now. Um, I didn't feel much in Bakewell, as I don't in many villages, because there was something going on. There was wardens and um, traffic backed up everywhere, so it was snided. It's the school holidays, so grab myself a um, traditional Bakewell tart, iced. I think the traditional ones actually don't have the icing on, but. Yeah, anyway, coming up to uh, Home Lane, I think it's called now. But there's some cows right there. Heifers, I think. Look at the size of those bad boys. I've been here numerous times, loads and loads of times. Never seen cows in this field. And also, I was quite embarrassed that I uh, set off in the wrong direction. First hill of the day, steady gradient. Not too bad, but carrying the uh, the pack I'm carrying and the weather, even the slightest incline makes makes me sweat and get out of breath quick. I think I spoke too soon. This incline just got a bit steeper. That's tight. So yeah, first little bit of incline and I'm out of breath. Standard. Um, as I was saying, I didn't film much in Bakewell simply for the fact that, you know, school holidays, there was cars everywhere. Um, it was snided. There was nowhere to sit. I went in the shop and I bought a uh, Bakewell tart or a slice of. And I couldn't move. There were people pushing me, um, squeezing past. One guy decided to pass his wife a big pie right in front of my face. Scuffed my cheek with a plastic like a, well, I won't say it on here, but yeah. So I didn't, I didn't get much filmed. Still on the right track. Horse flies everywhere. Scuff my arm already. That's a bit sore. Um, yeah, about two miles in, if that, a mile and a half maybe. Um, I still need to ring this campsite or try and find somewhere where I can actually bed down. But we'll see. We'll make the best of a bad situation, eh? The time is. 4.47 so the fact that I went the wrong way just did not help at all so it's taken about an hour off what I would have expected had I been an hour ahead is what I'm trying to say so I'm just going to get my head down and I'm going to put a few miles in I'll, uh, I'll record a little bit more further on I think the Monsell Trail might be a little bit busy so I might not do any filming on that but we'll see. 
got a squeaky bag syndrome going on over here. Can you hear that? It's only recently just started doing it. It's only just recently started squeaking. And I guess it's due to the wear and tear, but it's annoying. It's annoying the hell out of me. Whew. Need to get these fitness levels up. I want to do the Cumbria Way next year. I did consider going back and completing the uh, coast to coast, but I've just not got the time. So I've decided on the Cumbria Way either next year or later on in the year. Um, we'll see what the annual leave saying at work and you know childcare and all that stuff. But yeah, I want to get that done. So this will be good practice. Nice little 27 and a half miles over two days. Not too bad. I was uh, I was watching Hayes Outdoors the other day and he did this. <laughs> Made me laugh. Have you ever seen Gladiator? Is there a finer sight than uh, when you've reached the top of a hill and you see for miles that it's all downhill? Look at all these cows. Just absolutely chocker with heifers and a big old bull in that field. See that brown bull? Wait, let me see if I can zoom in on this bad boy. Oh, he's massive. He's a big old unit, that one. See, the thing is, if these walls weren't here and that fence weren't there, I would not be walking down this path. I'd uh, tell you, mate, I wouldn't mind uh, taking a detour, a 17 mile detour to get round, get round these bad boys, they're huge. And they're all like real inquisitive as well with calves in the field and uh, yeah, I don't trust them. Uh, I'm going to have to say this. I'm really sorry that you're all over the place. Uh, you're not on a gimbal. Uh, yeah, I'm just recording this on my phone. The, uh, the GoPro's in my pocket. So, I've got steady mode on, but it doesn't seem to be doing much. Oh man, it's the, the beauty of wearing contact lenses as well, when you're sweating. Whew, stings. Ouchie. So yeah, all flat from now, I think, I hope. To the Monsal Trail anyway. We're going to be hitting the Monsal Trail in about... 10 minutes, five minutes, where I'm gonna take a look. Oh no, look at this. I've had this fence down, look. The busted it, scratching the bottoms. And they're all staring. That's a big old unit there, look. Look at you. Look at size here, you're huge. Like a fine old steak. Oh, look at it though. The weather could not be better. I'm going to be hitting the Monsal Trail in about five minutes, if that. Take a left. And then it's all plain sailing along the Monsal Trail. But then I've got a bus to right somewhere. And I have no idea. I hope it's signposted for the dark, uh, for the white to dark peak trail. But I'm not sure whether it will be. So I have to check the OS map or something, but um, yeah, there's a little trail where I, t I bust the right and then it's all field walking, I think. Maybe a few hills by the looks of it. I am getting absolutely butchered by these nettles. My legs. All my legs are done. My arms. Oh my god. Absolutely mullered. So I've just found a head uh, to the farm where it's like five pounds a night and they've got plenty of space. So I'm hoping to hoping to hit that by about seven o'clock, half past seven maybe. 
and um, yeah, get a pitch for the night and then set off super early, maybe four o'clock, half past five, five o'clock, something stupid. Um, I might have to bathe these, bathe these legs and arms because just honestly, just covered in nettles things. Look, just everywhere. There's nettles everywhere, mate, on this path. Ridiculous. So yeah, as I said, I've, uh, I've called ahead um, and we'll get pitched up for the night there and set off early again in the morning. Head off. But I've got to be back at the car for about half past two because I've only paid for uh, a day's parking. So that takes me until half past two tomorrow. So... Hopefully I can smash a few miles in the morning while it's still cool and then uh, get back to Hope, do Wind Hill, get back to Hope for about half past two. I'm going to try anyway. Anyway, here we are, look, we're down at the Monsell Trail, just pulling up on the Monsell Trail now. Monsell Trail, Monsell Trail? How many times can you say Monsell Trail? Don't know how I've done it, but I've made a serious mess of this arm. It's really sore, keeps catching on the... Uh, Bag. So let me just give you a little bit of useless information about this trail. Um, it's called the White to Dark Peak Trail because over in the White Peak all the stone came from limestone and you've also got the limestone way over this side and over in the Dark Peak it was all, I think it was gritstone, gritstone, millstones and all that stuff. So it's just the different textures and the different colours in the stones which makes it the, the white peak and the dark peak. So there you go, every day's a school day. And for the record, the limestone way is also on my uh, hit list, so. So this used to be one of the old platforms for the old train station, look. See the bridge there? And that is a big ass, like, I don't know, youth hostel I suppose, but yeah, this used to be one of the um, platforms for the old train station. You've got Great Long Stone Trail and then the Wydale Trail this way, so we're headed straight on for a good while yet. No turns. Look at this tree. It's been uprooted. Not good in your front room, wouldn't it? Having that next to that log burner. Ooh. Little seat. Can you imagine back in the day, trains coming through this tunnel? Oh, it's immense. So cool down here as well. So nice. I'm starting to see light at the end of the tunnel. Literally. I'm not exactly sure how long this, uh, this tunnel is. I think it's called Headstone Tunnel. I'll have to have a look at the end and see. I think there's a sign just above, above the tunnel. But, um, Anyway, it's not long now until we, we have to bust the right, so um, I'll show you the name of the tunnel when we come out and then um, afterwards concentrate on the trail, get my head down, do another couple of miles. Yeah, headstone, headstone tunnel. If you need the toilet, that's the way up. I've just met the loveliest bunch of people uh, celebrating a birthday. As I came out the bridge, they were all taking a group photo and uh, I offered to take take one of all of them together. Um, they were celebrating with Prosecco and I said, oh, you're drinking, drinking alcohol as well. And the guy, the lovely, lovely guy came across afterwards and said, here you go, mate, hold on, hold on. 
bought me a brought me a glass of prosecco so yeah I'll see me right won't it for the next five miles or something but yeah nice people it's amazing who you find out when you just when you start hiking yeah hope they have uh, I don't think you'll be watching this but if you do you know hope you have a good birthday and uh, yeah lovely family Also, if you're desperate for a number two, there's this little little hut here. I can only assume it was the um, signaler's hut, I guess. The writing. Noise. Yes, yeah, so if you're desperate for the toilet, you can nip in there. I'll have to put the details up of how long the Monsell Trail is. It's an old disused um, railway, as I mentioned. And we keep coming up on these old... Um, platforms and crossing bridges and going through tunnels but uh, look, another one another old platform only a small one this time but yeah I'll have to put the details either there or in the description of the Monsell Trail because it's a really really nice walk it's a long one but uh, yeah well worth doing well worth coming out for especially in nice weather and I've just been bit on my leg So just come off the Monsell Trail now, heading down the valley um, and we're going to cross the River Y. There's a river crossing somewhere further down but I'm really going to have to conserve my battery because I'm on 41% and the map's telling me that I've got like two and a half hours of walking to go. The time now is, what time is it? Five to six so I should hit where I need to be by about eight I think. But if I put some miles in, put my phone down, stop recording, um, I should get there a little bit earlier maybe. I know I said I was going to stop recording, but look at that house. On the Hayes Outdoors video I was watching the other day, where he does the um, York to Whitby. Um, what does he call it? Not an homage. A uh, pilgrimage between the two abbeys. Well... York Minster and Whitby Abbey. He says, I love looking in people's gardens and people's houses and stuff, just like looking. I'm exactly the same. Even if it's a crap one. But that house down there, I know it's not a house, it must be like, I don't know, some sort of hostel or hotel. I'm sure it'll tell me on the map, but... Yeah looks immense even the grounds the gardens are all well kept you won't be able to see it on this camera but and I'm also trying not to fall down this down the side of this little cliff face we've got going on well this is good no access across this bridge so I've literally no idea how I'm gonna get across I'm gonna have to double back and uh, try a little bit further up maybe it doesn't even look like there's an alternative route across the river. I've been walking along like scree, just shale, rocks and scree. I'm not even back up to the Monsell Head Trail or the Monsell Trail. I'm literally walking on the side of a cliff. I should be up there somewhere on the other side, walking that direction. So parallel to what I'm walking now. Um, I can see the Monsell Trail actually in the distance Might be able to just make it out on the camera Just there, so hopefully this rejoins, this little path rejoins the Monsell Trail And I can somehow get across to where I need to be But I'll just continue following the OS maps for now There's a big eagle just circling If you can see it, I don't know if you'll make it out Just, just gone below the tree line there's also a big fat goose that won't move out of my way. Look, staring me down. It was sat on the path, I had to sort of hiss and get it out of my way, but yeah. Geese. So 
so I'm having to do a full-on detour across to Lytton Mill Lytton or Lytton Mill because the bridge was closed I don't know how many more miles that's going to put on the trail but if you're going to be doing this don't don't follow the map down to the bridge because the bridge is out of use stay on the Monsell Trail stay on the Monsell Trail and I think the next little bridge across the river is near Lytton Mill and then you can cut up I think there's a road by the looks of the map there's a road that goes up back towards the trail so I think I'm pulling up on it now actually I need to double back on myself and go down towards a bridge apparently so apparently apparently so yeah anyway yeah, don't go down to the bridge today because you will get a big surprise I've also bust out some trail snacks because I'm starving anyway plowing on <laughs> did you hear the shaking in my voice then I'm plowing on <laughs> I'll bring you back when I'm there because my battery's nearly dead this is the way you want to take Lytton Mill down we go how sketchy does this bridge look and take my time on this one it's slippy as hell wobbly as well Water looks nice and clear though. Look at that. That's their back garden. Their back garden just literally comes out onto the river. That's amazing. You can literally see the path I came across on where the goose was. It's just them. Um, it's not going to focus because my finger, but there. Look at this old chimney as well, just behind this tree. So I've got to continue on up. It's been a been a bit of an incline. Continue on up to I think Creswell, and then through to Lytton. Unless it's Lytton first, I can't remember. I don't really care at this point. Just want to get to where my tent's going to be pitched. I don't even know how many miles I've done. I'll have to look in the on the map when the. Uh, when I get back but yeah pressing on now to Lytton where we're going to be camping for the night and that there guys and girls is Lytton I think so we're just pulling up look at me there just pulling into Lytton We're about half an hour away from where I'm staying. Um, and when we get there, I'm just going to put the tent up. Just going to chill, take my shoes and socks off. Grab some food and a drink that I bought at Co-op in Bakewell. And I'm going to enjoy my Bakewell tart because I've not had a chance to uh, sit down and munch that one yet. And I'm also going to check for ticks because I didn't bring a tick key. So, yeah, let's get let's get there. Let's get there and uh, let's get chilled. Look at these. Look at these little bad boys. Don't be shitting. Don't be pooing on me. These houses are massive. Everybody's minted. Everybody's minted in Lytton. So we're just pulling up on where I'm going to be staying tonight. You can kind of see, I think that's White House Farm Camp up there. But I'm booked into like a smaller, um, car, uh, calm, smaller farm across from the uh, cafe. But as you can see, there's a like a herd of cows just right in the middle of this path. So I'm not sure how this is going to go down, but I might have to bust out the old uh, hiking poles. They're not going to move, are they? 
I can already tell. I hate cows. I hate cows. Anyway, let's have a go. I don't know how many of you have walked through a a big group of cows before. Are they still looking? Okay, I thought I had one behind me then, it's my bag. That was intimidating, proper intimidating. There was about nine, nine or ten cows. Let me see. Where are they? Can't see them. They're still in the path up. There's about nine or ten cows just stood there, didn't move at all. I got the hiking poles out to try and shift them on. And they literally all of them just stood staring. I had the goose pimples down my spine thinking they're going to trample me here. They're going to get me. Bob myself. Wasn't a nice feeling. I don't want to do that tomorrow. But yeah, anyway. I might bring you back when, uh, when I'm pitching the tent. We'll see. So that's me, that's me all pitched and in the tent, um, there's a few lads a little bit further up, I think they're in the pub, there's one on a bike, one in a tent and one in a camper, so um, I think it'll be too noisy, but yeah, I'm on a working farm, views, they're the toilets as well, so I think that's fresh water, fresh drinking water next to the toilet door. So in the morning, in the morning I can just top the water up um, and then get off. The plan is to set off about half past four, five o'clock because I need, I need to be back at the car for no later than half past two, otherwise I'm getting fined. So, and there's no option for online extension of uh, parking, paying the parking. So I need to get a wriggle on tomorrow. I'm fitting in uh, two sections in one. So I should be setting off early anyway. Um, I'll have a look at the mileage. I, I can't remember how many miles it is, but we're going from Lytton to Eam to Hathersage, Stanage Edge, round to Bamford and up Wind Hill. So there's a fair old distance to cover tomorrow. My feet are killing me already. Um, I had to do, so it was a three mile detour I had to take today. Anyway, there's a pub down the road, so uh, I might go and grab a pint. Maybe. So I didn't bring the stove, but I have bought some food uh, from the co-op in Bakewell, and I've carried it here with me. Chicken salad sandwich, a half-eaten bag of nuts, some salt and vinegar crisps, and the classic, or the iced Bakewell tart, which I can't wait to get down me. She looks well, doesn't she? Looks like a decent tent with that backdrop. Just been to the pub, had one pint, and uh, no offence to the people of Lytton, Lytton, however you want to pronounce it, but it is the most village place I have ever been in my life. The lady at the pub, the three stags head, the heat, three heads, three head stag, three stags head, I think. She told me where to sit. I walked in and she was like, plonk yourself over there because I've got a guy coming in a minute. He's going to want to sit there. It's like one of the oldest places I've ever seen in my life. Um, I couldn't get in. It took me about a minute to get in the door. The latch on the door was all seized. Um, I had one pint and left. I had to go because... Um, yeah, it was a was a really strange place. I got chatting to some of the people in there, and you know, pure pure locals, yokel locals. But um, yeah, the place that I'm camped at, this farm, five pound a night. So if you're on this uh, on this trail, get yourself in here. White House Farm is um, just across the way there, there, but it costs twenty pound a night. It's not too bad, I guess, but. You are at risk of um, having like loads of kids running around and stuff, so yeah, this is a working farm. There are there are people mooching around and I'm sure they'll be up at like four o'clock in the morning. There's people mooching around looking now, so anyway, 
I'm gonna dive in the tent. I'm gonna dive in the tent, have some food, and um, get my head down for the evening. Wolf this food down and uh, get some sleep because I'll be up at the crack of dawn uh, to get get on my way. So the next stop will be Eam and then on to Hadassage from there. So the other thing that I forgot to mention as well is that when I went in the pub, I asked if they did bottles of uh, Coca-Cola like for the morning or any kind of fizzy drink for the morning. And uh, she got grumpy about that. She was like, well, it depends what size do you want? It'll be expensive because I've got to sell it in measures. So I was like, I don't mind, honestly, just anything. And then she came out with this big like two litre bottle of Coke. And I went, I've been hiking all day, you know, I'm not, I don't want to carry that. So I said, just leave it. And then uh, I went to pay for the pint with the card, with my bank card, and she kicked off. And she was like, bring cash. I won't see a penny of that. Have you got any, have you got a five pound note on you? And I'm like, no, I've been hiking all day. I've just paid this lady five pound for the camping. Um, yeah, so she went a bit mad. She, she, she turned out to be a lovely lady. Like she, when she'd sat me down in the place that she wanted to sit me down in, um, she, she was asking me about where I was camping, what I was doing and stuff, which was nice, but, you know, and then there's, there's like a few guys on the table next to me as well that are asking what I'm doing. One of them said, does your mum know you're out in shorts? I'm like, what the fuck? What? What are you talking about? There's another, another camp has just pulled in, um, so we're not on our own, but, uh, yeah, I'll be up and out in the morning for sure up and out so yeah anyway let's raise you up a raise you up so you can stand on tripods I like my singing there oh you see me a bit better now I'll shuffle down for you I'm gonna tuck into a sandwich Nice chicken salad, salad. Nice co-op chicken salad. Look, it's probably backwards for you on there, isn't it? Oh, shit, honestly, I can't wait to tuck into this. Look at this. How could I do this starting at Bakewell and not get a Bakewell tart, Bakewell pudding? I had to. The icing's falling off. The icing's falling off in the bag. Not happy about this, mate. It's all stuck to paper as well. Here we go. Let's get you back on. That's naff, isn't it? Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> the couple's just gone walking past looking in my tent while I'm talking to you. I bet they were like, he's mental. If they think I'm mental, wait until they get to that pub. Because that's where they're going. And that's the first thing I've had to eat all day. Well, that's a lie. I had half a packet of um, cashew nuts. Half a bag of those. Just as like trail snacks for the walk. I don't even know if I'll be able to use this footage tomorrow. I don't know whether you can hear me or not. You know, the funny thing is as well, when you've done a big hike, when you've done like a big through hike, you're not as hungry. At the end of the day, you're so tired that you're not, you don't want to eat. Your body's like, nah mate, no, no more work. Done enough for you today, stop putting things inside me. Sounds wrong, but I meant food. 
the temperature's come down loads. It's been boiling the whole walk. This evening's lovely, no clouds, no wind. But the temperature's like, the temperature's almost gone down about 10 degrees. Tales from the tent, eh? There's a road literally about 50, 100 yards away. That's going to be going all night. And I think the trail that I need to follow tomorrow is that away and back. So over there. Bosh. driving down to London on Monday so this for me is my um, it's not my downtime but it's my my time me time do you know what I mean to do something I want to do in the time I've got I don't know if I can do I don't know if I can do all this food Maybe save some for tomorrow, but I know I brought all this food from Bakewell because I know tomorrow I can just pick something up in Eam or I can pick something up in especially Hathersage. Hathersage has got like um, I think it's a Texaco garage, loads of little shops. And do you know the annoying thing is as well? I could walk home from Hathersage, I could walk home from um, Stanage Edge. I'm up Stanage Edge all the time. I was up at High Neb the other day, and tomorrow I've got to walk past it. I hope you're enjoying the walk so far. Hope, I hope I've not been too annoying or monotone. I hope you've watched it to this point. Can you hear that sheep? Sounds like it's on 40 a day. So, hopefully, hopefully the wind stays down a bit today as well, tonight tonight sorry because I've not pegged the tent out properly there's a, a guy line there and a guy line there that I've not pegged out and a guy line there and a, these two end guy lines I've pegged out these two I've left unpegged because I just want to get up and off in the morning so I've put as few pegs in as possible <laughs> this chicken sandwich co-op co-op have outdone themselves co-op sandwiches used to be crap it used to be pants baba I've never spent any money on a co-op sandwich. And it's like they've upped the game. So luckily, I mean, I will be warm tonight. I'm on the Flextail Gear Zero um, insulated mat and the OEX Leviathan. And I've brought a base layer. A base layer out with me. Just so. Oh, wow. The moon's just... The, a car went past and I thought that it was coming into the field so I've done this. The moon looks insane. I'm going to have to get a night shot of that moon. Right. Let me see if I turn you around you can see it. Oh, you can't. You can't see it but it's just... Let me... Um, there just peeking over now anyway fucking do him doing 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 lad <laughs> my son will know we started watching this channel called Spanion on YouTube and he goes he goes doing 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 lad <laughs> you know he's one of these guys that has been in prison um, done a lot of time in prison and now all he does is go around the world on YouTube showing people stuff like demilitarized zones in Korea. Korea. It's 
it's getting a bit chilly, so I'm going to put a base layer on. There we go, that's better. This is just a, uh, a four, it's not a four class, a Wedzy. It's a Wedzy Decathlon base layer, but it's, it's nice and warm. You know what time it is. Oh, Bakewell tart time. It's like I said, I can't do this walk. I was going to eat it in Bakewell. I was going to show you me eating it in Bakewell. But it was so busy, I couldn't... I couldn't not only record, I couldn't walk. There wasn't... I mean, my bag was too big to walk. I couldn't get in the toilet. When I... I had to go and buy the cable to connect to my power bank. Uh, from a... Like, it's like a toy shop. But I had to go and buy the cable anyway. And I said to the guy... You know, is there anywhere to go for for a number one, like, to the toilet that's not the pay one, the 20 pence to go? And he was like, well, we've got one here you can use. But it's nothing special, it's just the toilet, but it does the job. So I was like, sweet, mate. I, like, I dropped my bag and he uh, just went into the staff bit in this in this shop and um, went there. So, yeah, I couldn't film, couldn't walk, couldn't, couldn't do anything, literally. I filmed as much as I could in Bakewell. It wasn't until I was coming out of Bakewell that I could actually um, do any kind of talking or filming. I get a bit paranoid with the filming in villages and around people because I don't want to... Um, do you know the whole GDPR thing? Yeah, anyway, I'm going to tuck into this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it tastes so good. Mm, I'm eating it like that. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. That, um, they've given me the crust. The crust's a bit dry. Still good though. Amazing. The icing helps. Oh, I don't want to put it down on the tent because it's got, it's got greasy bottom. Very greasy paper and stuff. So when I put it down on the tent, it needs a patch. I'm going to finish this, I'm going to finish all the food, and then I'm going to get my head down for a bit, I think, because I'm up early in the morning, but I really, really want to get a few shots of that moon tonight, and if I can get some shots of that moon, some close-up images or whatever, I'll put them up, I'll put them up around here, right now, and then uh, you'll be able to see see the moon in all its glory but I don't think my camera does it my camera does it well on my phone but I don't think the video captures captures it let me eat my food good morning um, the time is five five o'clock in the morning 4.40 4.59 um I'm a little bit later than I, I wanted to be, but um, it's it's so cold. I don't want to get out my sleeping bag. Ugh. The condensation's pretty bad as well on the tent, um, so it's going to be a wet one this morning. Packing away. Um, yeah, nothing major to report really. Amazing. Amazing night, no uh, no wind. I could hear the sound of the traffic all night, that's all. Got a little bit of sleep, maybe about three hours. So I'm gonna pack this stuff up and uh, get on my get on my way. Head over to Eam this morning and then uh, obviously down to Hathersage. I was thinking in the night as well. 
just to save some battery, just to conserve some battery when I get to Hathersage. Um, when I get to have I'm going to show you some of this condensation in the tent because it's, it's pretty bad. It's the worst I've known it. Um, the temperatures outside must have dropped down to look like, I don't know, real low numbers. But um, yeah, I was thinking that when I get to Hathersage, I might not record the uh, Stanage Edge section. I might just record the bit coming down through Bamford because I've been up. I was up in... Uh, was up on Stanage Edge a couple of days ago anyway, so I might just put a picture of like Stanage Edge high neb to conserve battery because by that point I'm gonna be in a, a bit of a mad rush anyway, trying to get back to the car on time and you know. So I might just leg it leg it up Stanage Edge and then round and then record a little bit through Bamford and then just tap out at Wind Hill and back down into Hope. So yeah. Right, let's get this stuff away, shall we? Look at that. Oh, it's drenched. It'll be so wet this morning. Um, I wish I'd brought a jumper. And there we go, one final check, and we're off on our way again. It's a very misty morning this morning, very wet, very cold. But um, it's due to warm up and get brighter as the day goes on. So I'm just going to drop some uh, crap off at the toilet and then we'll get on our way. It smells like something's died. Yeah, it's a farm, innit? It smells pretty bad, so it's all the uh, manure and that. But what more what more do you want for a fiver? Bit of land, pitch your tent, get off early in the morning. Feet are soaking wet though. Condensation on this grass has not helped. Right, we're off. There's always a um, an eerie feeling when you're walking through fields, farmers' fields, and it's misty and you can't really see too far ahead but it looks so nice this morning look at the mist just covering the farmers fields and rolling down off the hills just recorded another segment and forgot to press record again um, I was saying the good thing about it being so cold this morning is that it's made my water freezing cold which is nice. It's always good to know that you're on the right trail. I feel like I gave that pub last night a little bit of a bad press. Um, it was, it was like a little local pub for local people. You know, League of Gentlemen vibes and all that. But I'm sure the people in there were lovely in their own right, and uh, the the beer was nice. Can't fault the beer, but yeah, I had to get out of there real quick. I made a mistake as well. It's not the pub wasn't in Lytton; it was in um, Wardlow, just down the road. And you know the pub, the pub itself was decent, real small. Um, a local pub for local people, but got to make sure I don't lose this trail. I think we set off before the official sunrise this morning. We've just come up through all that clag. I was camped down in the, uh, obviously down in the valley. I think this is the, I think this is the route. Let's get up and over this. Whoa. We're headed up there, so the official sunrise was at like 5.58 and it's like maybe 6.02 now. If you ever do, if you ever do do, the white 
it's a dark peak way stop off at the three stags head i researched it last night i thought the pub was older than it is actually i like to look at the history of places when i go there just out of pure curiosity and interest um bit of a geek like that i suppose but anyway next stop fulo fulao however you say it and then Eam and then we're going to there's a couple more villages before Hathersage so yeah let's put some uh, put some distance between me and that pub I've left the old Long John's on this morning look it was absolutely freezing <laughs> freezing when I woke up so I've left the Long John's on and you know the uh, base layer look at that the uh, OEX Leviathan just pisses feathers. Starting to warm up a little bit now. Now the sun's coming up. It's an amazing view, look. You can't knock waking up to that, can you? So we're just coming into Fulo, Fulo now. There was a hare, a big hare just by this, just by this little pond and it took off in a shot. I tried to get some uh, video footage of it, but you know, too fast. But look at this, the old Anglo-Saxon cross. I think it's the Anglo-Saxon one. Alright, so it's the uh, Fulao Village Cross, circa 14th century, erected in its present position in 1868 after removal from the locally locality of the Wesleyan Reform Chapel. 1868, okay. Nice though. Look at this pub. If I'd have uh, if I'd have come up this way last night, I'd have been straight in there. Bosh. That sunrise just doesn't look real at all. Look at that over the meadow and the mist. Some of these gates are tiny, 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 like so small that I can't get my bag through. I don't know if you can <clears throat> I don't know if you can hear it but my feet are my feet are absolutely drenched from that last field squelching but I've just checked check the weather forecast again it's supposed to be about 18 today so hopefully hopefully it'll all dry off the sunrise is ridiculous. I've been absolutely blessed this morning. Can't. You can't hope for better than that, really. Oh, you'll notice the uh, the undergarments have come off, starting to sweat a little bit. So, 
Anyway, making our way into Eam now. I think this path should bring us out at Eam Museum or Iam Museum. And then we crack on down through Eam to another little village called can't remember the name of it, so I'll probably just put the name of it there. Uh yeah, I'm gonna get some miles done now. Looks like looks like there's a hill hill coming up, so and I'm gonna be walking up into the clag. So not much filming from now. And uh fully aware fully aware that I keep saying that, but also I can't not film this sunrise. Look. Damn. I've just been doing some quick maths. Um, the route says it should take about five hours to get from where I was at Wardlow to Hathersage. So I'm trying to put some pace in but I want to get down into Hathersage for about nine o'clock, which means it would have taken me three and a half hours. So, go to these gates. Fields on fields. Um, bear with me. Uh, yeah, so I want to get down into Hathersage for about half eight, nine o'clock. I want to knock about an hour off, basically, an hour, an hour and a half. So, hopefully by that point I'll be able to film some of Stanage Edge. But I don't want to keep stopping, stopping and filming because I'm time bound by the car in hope. Which, which is annoying. And I hope the car is alright actually. It's the first time I've used that car park. So, we'll see, see if I've got a ticket. No doubt we'll have. Just pulled into Bigfoot's territory. Look at the size of this tree that's been uprooted. That's ridiculous. I wonder what's done that. Massive deer scratching its arse on that tree, I reckon. It'll be alright in the morning. Couple of beers and that'll be back up on its feet. No worries. Some big dogs. <laughs> Little Shih Tzu. There was a Doberman taking a turd on the lawn as well. walking through Eam now. I'm going to stay quiet because there's people with windows open just waking up but Eam steeped in history. Steeped in history as you know. It's the plague village. They practically cut this village off from the outside world. Um, I'll put the history of the village in in the description but yeah so many cottages and lovely little houses. Anyway I'm gonna crack on because I don't know which which road to take. Look at these old drinking troughs. Whole hill troughs. The troughs are so called because of the nearby Bradshaw Hall. They were formed part of a series of troughs established in 1558. Just leaving Eam now and it's on to Stoke Ford all uphill for a little bit. Might have a rest at the top. So it says road closed but we're not using the road. We're using the path. So hopefully we'll be alright. That was a steep old scramble coming up from Eam through the woodland, Whew. 
you take a road called the Nook and it brings you up through some woods but it's literally all incline so I'm a bit sweaty now and there she is look the moorland that I recognise all the edges Bamford Edge Stanage Edge Wind Hill way over in the distance I don't think you'll be able to see much to be honest but it just gives you a little bit of hope you know after all those miles of walking and then you see your sort of your final destination in the distance Bosch you know you're on the real moors when you hit this kind of terrain like sandy paths, heather in full bloom and these rocks, massive stones, boulders not far to go now maybe 11 or 12 miles I'm not sure, I'm really not sure but I think we pass through two two more villages and then we're at Hadassage Hadassage um, and then I'm going to get I thought I could stock up on supplies at Eam I thought I could get myself like a bottle of coke or maybe a sandwich but no because I set off so early everything was closed so yeah making do with the water for now and uh, we'll stop off and grab some or we'll resupply when we get to a village with a shop a nice shop like a co-op or a Tesco I don't know if you can see it there um, how do I do this there, there just there I don't know if you can see it but that's Sir, is it Sir William Hill or William Hill Trig I did nearly take a detour to go and tap out tap out on that Trig but I thought you know push for time I'm trying to get down to Hathersage real quick so I just thought stick with the track and uh, get to the destination get to where I'm going in good time oh, how amazing is this look at this cloud inversion down in the valley now I know that's not mist because it's real thick and I don't know if you can make it out just there but that is I think that's the chimney smoke from Castleton Cement Works and then you've got I think that um, that there I think is Wind Hill I think I hope and that's what I'll be topping out on you've got all I think that's oh, where are we I think that's Stanage Edge and then Bamford Edge let me just go, Stanage Edge, Bamford Edge, Wind Hill, Castleton Cement Works. So I'm not far off now. Just gonna contribute to this. So just coming down off the E Moorland, and you're gonna have to be very careful coming down this section because as you can see it's absolutely covered in bracken. And underfoot you've still got your path, but you've got like boulders and rocks and loose loose bits of path so you're gonna have to be super careful coming down this way so there's a few ankle breakers that are not visible to the eye due to the bracken so it's wet as well wet and cold a bit warm I'm a bit warm now Right, so I can definitely see Hadassage, I can see Stanage Edge and Wind Hill. So I know, I know loosely where I'm going, but um, I want to tick off all the, uh, all the points on this map just to say that I've done this trail in its entirety. So rather than skipping bits, I want to go the right route. Let's see what this says. So we're heading down into Stoke Ford. I've just come down from Eam, off of Eam Moor. 
and we're going to take a trip down this way to Stoke Ford and then round into Havasage. Oh, oh, grouse! That got me. That proper got me. I was just about to say I'm so glad that I took my socks, uh, my, um, what do you call it? My uh, base layer into the socks because it's preventing all the bits going into my, down into my feet and stuff, so. But yeah, that grouse, honestly, scared the living daylight out of me. It nearly gave me a heart attack. It waited a few seconds. It was like I'd started filming and I was about to talk and it waited a few seconds and then just jumped out on me. Right, it's opened up a bit now. The uh, bracken was right up to, you know, right up to my face, so I couldn't really uh, get the phone out and do any talking. But just come down into Bre is it Breton Brook, I think. Let me have a look. Yeah, so just a little bit of walking to do past Breton Breton Brook, and then I think it turns into High Low Brook. Um, nice little bit of woodland walking cools things off a little bit, doesn't it? And I guess if you've got a bit of time, you can also like you know. Strip down to your undercrackers and jump in, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to continue on through these woods and uh, get out. Just passing, uh, passing that. What do you call it? Little village. Can't remember what the village is called anyway. But yeah, I'm going to crack on. just occurred to me that I've lost my um, hiking poles and my hat and I wasn't going to use the hiking poles until um, we got to Stanage Edge so it's going to be a struggle from the bottom but there's always something isn't there it's never easy luckily enough they were only cheapo ones five pound each I think and the hat was about seven quid, so yeah, just have to make do. I'm about maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half's walk outside of uh, Hadesage now. Made some really good time actually. I've just checked the map. I'll pop it there for you. We've covered that distance in two and a half hours. So another another hour or so, and I'd say we'd be in Hadesage at this rate. So we're making good time. Hadesage, getting ever closer. So annoying though because I've got to walk down here which is alongside but away from Hathersage and then I've got to cut back on myself when I could just cut through the fields really and get straight there. Doesn't look like the uh, the inversion's burnt, burnt off yet or the mist in the valley. But there, look, you can see that is Wynn Hill. Wynn Hill, Bamford Edge, and Stanage Edge. The only tough section I can see is well, there's two getting up Stanage Edge and getting up Wynn Hill. Um, I've done both before numerous times. I know this area like the back of my hand as well. So uh, I only have to keep checking the map until Hathersage just makes sure that I'm on the right footpath and I don't take any detours in the wrong direction. So, which I can't see happening, but I don't want to put another 10 minutes on, 10, 5, whatever. 
Um, but yeah, the only two obstacles now, Stanage Edge and Wind Hill. Now from Stanage Edge, they say it takes five and a half hours. I thought there was a car coming then. They say it takes five and a half hours from Stanage Edge, um, sorry, from Hathersage, uh, to do nine and a half miles, nine and a half miles round Stanage Edge, down past Bamford, Lady Bower, and then up Wind Hill. Which, the time now is, I think it's like 20 past eight. So we should be back in good time. If I can keep this pace, which I won't, I won't keep this pace up Stanage Edge or up Wind Hill. We should be back at the car in time, which is right down in the Hope Valley. In Hope Village, actually. Anyway, there's a, there's a footpath here, so I'm gonna check the map. So apparently that wasn't the one. We just followed the road down into Offerton. Uh, follow the roads now, really. All the way around into Hathersage. So, yeah, been a, been a nice morning so far. Put a few miles in. Got about, I don't know, that's about a mile away, Hathersage. So maybe about 10 and a half miles left. But yeah, all in all, all in all, a good one. You like the hair? Blah, blah, blah. We're on the right track. Look at these pair of porkers. Jeez. Too many truffles. The kid needs a salad. Here we are then, the River Derwent. Looks like I'm going over these stepping stones. And the fact that I've lost my hiking poles has not helped this situation. Here we go. Fucking duck scared me. Yeah, hiking poles not needed. Oh, actually, this one's a bit of a bit of a jump. The stones where I'm going to put my phone away and I'll pick up where I left off at the other side. Nailed it. Look at these hazelnuts. That one looks ripe for the picking actually. Might have that one. Just a little bit of road walking now to get us inside the sage. I've decided I'm going to pick up a meal deal. I'm going to grab an energy drink, a sandwich and a, a packet of crisps or something. I smashed that little section though. The time's half past eight in the morning. So I've taken two hours off of what I wanted to do really. So absolutely smashed that section. I set off at what, half past five? So three hours. Here we are then, had the siege. I can't wait to get to that Texaco, get myself some food and a drink. Good old Stanage Edge. Been up it many times. I live just the other side of that, so I know it very well. I've taken a slight detour off the road because Hadesage gets quite busy as well. There's bunting and everything. I think there's maybe some sort of event on this weekend. A lot of people go to see the church as well, where supposedly I think little John from the Robin Hood fables and all that stuff, he's buried there. So you can go and see little John's grave at the cemetery or the church, just outside of Hadesage. But I'm taking the detour because it, it's just road walking up there and I don't want to get hit by a car or anything. And I know this path's here, so it runs parallel. So I'm not really, it's not much of a detour, but it's more the, uh, 
public public footpath alongside the road that runs up out of Hathersage. But yeah, we're on his way to Stanage Edge now. Once we're up there, it's uh, I don't know what's going on with my hair today. That's why I put the hat in the bag, so I could wear the so I could wear the hat for the last bit. It's pretty plain sailing. Once we're at the top of Stanage Edge, you walk all the way across and down towards Lady Bower. I don't know if it's Bamford New Road that this route takes you, but um, and then it's up. It's going to be a steep incline up Wind Hill. So yeah, that'll be the challenging finale, taking on my nemesis. Do you know what? Actually, I've not taken a detour. I thought I'd taken a detour, but look, I'm still on the white to dark way. So zero detour needed. So this is the campsite that I would be staying on if I was doing it for three days, <coughs> over three days. But because I'm doing it in two days, I think we'll just carry on. I've had to sit down and have a little break. Climbing, climbing Stanage. It's never easy. Never easy. But once we're up, just back down towards Lady Bower from there. Across to High Neb and then down. Um, and then the last one is Win Hill. And then back to the car. Every day is leg day in the Peak District. And I'm never, never prepared. These are the views from Stanage, Stanage Edge. I'm going to follow the ridge all the way along, tap out on High Neb, and then make my way down over to Wind Hill, I think, there in the distance. Um, you can see there just where I've come from. Knackered. Just going to tap out on High Neb for the second time this week. And then we continue. I've not recorded much coming down from Stanage Edge, or over Stanage Edge actually, but um, and that's simply because I'm running low on time. Um, a bit of advice for you as well, when you're coming across Stanage Edge, pick your feet up because I've kicked the same toe up about five times. Absolute agony. Definitely going to get a black toenail. But um, yeah, so I can see the road that I need to get myself onto. The plan is to get to the base of Wind Hill for dinner time, 12 o'clock. The time now is 11, so I've got an hour to get down past Derwent, down onto Manchester Road, and then down, like, down that way. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I can get some miles in. I'm going to put my phone away, get my head down, and get down Derwent. And uh, if I make it to the base of Wind Hill for 12 o'clock, I'll do a bit of recording. But um, as things stand, I'm trying to put some miles in. My uh, my feet are really starting to ache now, and I'm not too far off. Look at the state, mate. Look at the state of my hair and the greys. Ridiculous. Um, yeah, so I'm in a bit of pain. Just coming up to the A57, um, which leads you down to Lady Bower Reservoir. But I'm going to cut across this, I think, and then like you have to double back on yourself. It's annoying because the A57 is the road that I drove down to get into uh, Hope for the parking. And I know how close it is now, but I also know how far away Wind Hill is, which it's not good for the old noggin. It's not good for the morale. So, yeah, especially with my feet in this much pain. We'll see, we'll do it, but there's a long way to go yet. Still hoping to make it down to Lady Bower for 12. I don't think it's too far 
down to the actual reservoir itself but then there's a little walk across to the base of Wind Hill so and I've never done that before I just don't know how far how far that's gonna be so yeah still plodding on here we are then Derwent Derwent Reservoir there's people kayaking bodyboarding lovely day the temperature's got up a little bit though hill just behind people on it people fishing I think I've got to go up through the woods I'm now on the ascent up to Wind Hill via the woodland next to Lady Bower Reservoir. It's going to be a steep one. The, the sun's come out, it's really warm. So I might have to have a few stops on this. But essentially, I've got about an hour and a half. Got about an hour and a half to get this done. And then back down the other side to Edale Road. Back to the car and back home. This literally has to be the steepest bit of woodland I've ever had to do in my life. I'm literally taking it tree by tree. The camera probably doesn't do it any justice, but it's absolutely killing me. Look, sweating, dripping with sweat. Not long though, I've got about an hour, an hour left on the clock for the uh, car. So I might end up being late if I can't get up this any faster, quicker. I'm literally gonna have to leg it down the other side. Anyway, I suppose the best, I suppose the best crack on. I'm now just beginning the descent down into Hope. Just tapped out on Will Hill, Will Hill, Wind Hill. Um, I can literally see where I'm about to finish as well. I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up on camera. That church there is the finishing point. It's also about two minutes from where I parked. So, yeah, after a gruelling day of hiking, moorland, scrubland, woodland, uphill, downhill, um, I'm almost there, I can taste the finish line. Train, the train to Edale and beyond. I can smell it now, the victory. Just about to cross the uh, railway lines and into Hope, down Edale Road. Yeah, and then we'll be back at the car. Victory. There she is, look, parked up in corner. Let's see how much time I've got left on it. in the car on my way home so I had 
30 minutes left on the ticket. And if you can see it, 30 minutes left on the ticket, which means I've absolutely smashed a three day hike in 24 hours. I'll take that, I'll take that any day of week. But that last couple of miles nearly, honestly nearly broke me. Oh, dying. So yeah, I'm gonna get home and uh, I'm just gonna throw myself, throw myself on the sofa and uh, run a bath, probably. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you've made it this far, it's gonna be a long one. Thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe and do all the all the stuff. Like, share, subscribe, comment, blah, 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 blah. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one.